Hello guys, Nigel here with you, Nigel's Modelling Bench, and uh, back with you tonight with a, well tonight for me, maybe morning for you, whatever, but this is a review of some bits that have been sent to me from a company in Hungary called Red Fox Studios, www.rfstudio.hu, and if you haven't heard of these guys, they're a fairly new company, I think they've been around for just over a year, maybe two years, and they have a very fast growing range of um, 3D, I guess, I don't know if they're 3D printed or how they're actually made. I must speak to them and find out, but they're actually 3D instrument panels and cockpit details for all your aircraft kits. Now, I've had a couple that I've shown you before. If you go back on my channel, you'll see that I did the, um, the B1 cockpits and everything and they were really nice and also I've done the Su-27 um, cockpit that was really really nice for the that was made for the um, what's the name of that kit you know the, the the beautiful one with about a million parts I can't remember the, the company now but they only, they've only produced that one kit but this time we've got quite a fat envelope you can see you've got quite a fat jiffy bag here so we've got one lot and you can see there's quite a few sets in there and we've got another lot and we can see there's quite a few sets in there. So everything I'm going to show you is from this company here. So I'm going to leave that on the side. Well, I won't leave it on the side because it's white and it messes the camera up. But basically this is all from Red Fox Studio. So if we just open up this packet, I'll show you what I've got in here. We won't go through all of them in this video, but I will cover them in other videos going forward. If there is one set you would particularly like to see close up, leave a comment below. Let me know which one it is and I'll make sure that it goes to the top of the pile for the next video we look at. So this one here is 124th scale and this is for the Junkers JU87B2 Stuka and it's designed for the trumpeter kit. Um, so that's that one there. This is the F16CJ Fighting Falcon in 132nd scale and this is for the Tamiya kit. Now I've got this kit so this will come in very handy. and. Um, Beautiful set it is too. The Volt F4U1 Corsair, this is for the Tamiya kit in 132nd scale. So you can imagine with this in there, it's really going to make that that um, that cockpit really, really pop. So uh, we've got that one there. This is by no means the full range they do. They've got a massive range in, I think they do 72nd. I know they do 48th, they do 35th, 32nd and 24th. And they are absolutely stunning. We'll look at some of these in a minute. There's the uh, 132nd scale Spitfire Mark 9C for the Tamiya kit, which is unfortunate because I've just put one of these together. So um, could have used that in there, but I uh, don't think I'll be cutting it about now. This is the CH47D Early Chinook. Um, this is the 135th scale. This is for Trumpeter. Now, I've got the CH47A. I don't have the 47D. But I haven't built it yet, but you know what? I'm tempted to say sod the accuracy and put this in anyway. So we shall see. SR71A Blackbird, this is in 148 scale, funnily enough. So um, that's going to be uh, used, as you know, you saw my review I did yesterday of this actual kit. So we will have a good look at this one because I will be using that one. And this finally for this packet is the 148 scale AH-64D Apache for the Hasegawa kit, a beautiful helicopter. It's so ugly, it's beautiful. And you can see you're getting quite a lot in there as well. So we've got all of these, um, everything you basically see on the front here is what you get. And then going into the next packet, here we have a kofofoli, as it were, of 132nd scale. We've got the Panavia Tornado GR1 IDS for the Ravel kit. So well, that's going to be a lovely upgrade for that because the, the cockpit in that is quite lacking. And as you can see, they've got the colours lovely as well. So that's going to be nice. We've got 32nd scale Volt Corsair FU, F4U1A uh, in 32nd scale for the Tamiya. So we had this one here. This one was for the F4U1. And this one is for the F4U1A. So you can see straight away there are a couple of little differences there. But, um, very nice indeed. Then we've got the Spitfire Mark 8 again for the Tamiya kit. So that's going to be a lovely, lovely addition for that one. A6E Intruder, 32nd scale. Beautiful model. Did have one and sold it. Um, but, you know, that's going to be a lovely addition for that. And you can see 
really really nice. AH1Z shark mouth for the Academy kit. This is something I really want to do one day. Um, I will get myself this. Um, and it says here 132nd, it's actually 135th as they've got there. So uh, that's for the Academy kit. I Maybe ICM will bring this out in 32nd um, scale as they've got the Cobras as we know in 32nd coming out. I've also just found out they're doing a Sky Crane in 135th. So that's going to be really nice. And then finally here we've got the F4B Phantom 2 for the Tamiya kit in 148th. So um, that's going to really set that cockpit off because you've you know you've got the two, you've got the front and back seat. They, it's just going to look amazing. All the fuses and switch gear in there. That's going to look incredible. So F4B Phantom, AH1Z Sharkmouth, A6E Intruder, Spitfire Mark 8, F4U 1A Corsair, F4U 1 Corsair. Pavia, Panavia Tornado GR1 IDS, AH64D Apache, SR71A Blackbird, we'll look at that one, um, CH47D Chinook, we'll look at that one, Spitfire Mark 9C, F16CJ Fighting Falcon, and Junkers JU87B in 24th scale, we'll have a look at that one. So any of those other ones you want to see, you drop me a message comment down below, and I'll make sure the next video I do, that they feature on there. And I may even give some of these away. We don't know, I don't know. We'll see. So let's have a look at this one here first. Let's have a look at the chin up first. So as you can see, they all come beautifully packed. Header card for hanging in the shops. They've got a nice stiff card in here. You've got a lovely colour image on the front that's showing you basically everything you're getting in there. Description of the kit and everything. And then when you turn them out, no, no source to another, they're UV, UV protected and they're bendable. They're not all brittle. Um, Information on the back, they've got MIG ammo colour schemes. We'll look at the instructions and see just how deep that goes. Uh, not really sure why they've got MIG ammo colour schemes, but we will see. Um, maybe they've coloured their, um, you know, use MIG ammo as their guide for the colours to make the, uh, make the panels too. So, nice close fitting bag as usual, really difficult to get out. There we go. So we've got that there, and as I say, this is for the CH47D early Chinook in 48 scale. So you can see the actual 3D panels come individually bagged and bonded to a card. And then here we get instructions. Okay, so this is basically showing us what all the part numbers are. So that's laid out. You can see there all beautifully laid out. Okay, and then here we've got some more. And this is basically showing you where all those parts go. So if we go from the beginning up here, we've got basically, this is the, the uh, image on the front of the packaging. So we've got original kit parts, A6, 7, blah, 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 blah. Um, and what we're doing, the blue parts are not smooth, please sand them first. So basically it's telling us to remove all the raised detail on those parts and make them smooth. Or if you want to keep them for another kit, Cut some plastic card out the same size if it's a flat panel and just use that. Uh, the quick set 3D acrylic parts must not be cut with a scalpel, they break easily, handle with care. So they are kind of flexible as you can see. Okay, you can see they have got some flex in them, but you must be very careful about trying to cut through them because they'll tend to sort of splinter and like wood. If you try and if you try and um you know just drive a nail into the end of a piece of wood, it will split open. And that's sort of the same as this. It, it just, it's just brittle, if you like. Well, wood splits because of the grain, but you know what I mean. Uh, the parts can be glued together with PVA glue or cyanacrylate. The upgrade parts can also be washed with enamel or acrylic paint. That's good to know. Usable varnish types, ester, white spirit, nitro, lacquer and acrylic based. Durable UV resistant surface. Maximum bendability tolerance, 5 degrees. So, as I said, you can flex it a little bit. Um, I think some of these are very, very brittle. Um, so here they're, they're giving you a description of, so you've got the part number one as per your description over here with your part numbers. So part number one is going on to part number L8, part number two is going on to F9, part number three is going on to F8 and so forth as you can see there. Okay, so very, very clear and concise instructions and then the same down here. Um, so as I say, you can use cyanacrylate, you can use PVA glue, something I'm going to start trying with my, um, with my, um, 
uh, PE parts and you know resin parts and stuff. Gator are making a. I've got some here. Where is it? Gator are doing a glue. I have got it in a drawer here. Where is it? I can't see it now. Uh, but Gator are doing a glue, and it's like a 60, 60 second glue. It's it's like super glue, but it takes longer to set. So uh, I think it's Gator glue anyway. But um, that's what I'm going to try with this sort of thing. So. This is the set for the CH47D. Is there anything on the back? No, that's just plain white card. So basically, as you can see, it's taking you through and it's telling you where all the parts go. And it's just basically replacing the detail on the kit parts. So you've got no painting to do and it is proper, proper 3D. Now, I've got some photo etch here to compare it to. So this is the, you know, probably the world's most famous photo etch. And these are photo etch panels that are going to be very similar to these panels here. But remember, this is a CH47A, this is a CH47D, and straight away the obvious difference is the colour on that fascia. But will that go over that? Yes, it will. So at the end of the day, if you really wanted to, you could always put that panel over, the, over this panel, but then why would you? So I'll actually have to buy the CH47A one, I think. But I think they'll be watching this. Um, hi Attila, if you're watching this. Uh, thank you for sending me all these. This is much more than I was expecting. I have actually been in touch and asked if they're going to be doing the BF109 and Stuka in 35th scale for the Border Models kits because I think they would benefit from it. Certainly the 109 would. The Stuka has a very nice instrument panel actually. Um, so we can see here this one's actually come adrift and that one probably belonged over here. I think they've got a tiny amount of adhesive tape on here yeah it doesn't want to stick there I'm not sure exactly how they're stuck down but I'm not going to um, tempt fate but what I want to show you on here if I put my hand flat and I take the photo etch panel okay if we compare in fact let's put this one upside down this is the kind of thing we're looking at okay let's move that one that way a bit move that one that way a bit so it stays level these two panels here although they may not be identical they are the same panel from an A and a D. Okay, so they have may, may have different switch gear on them, but just have a look at them and compare them close up. I'm gonna to have to stand up for this. Just compare them close up and look at the difference you're getting in the detail. Especially when you start to look on an angle and you can see that on here, you are actually getting the 3D, all the switch gear is raised. Okay, it's not just a flat, smooth piece of photo etch. Whereas when you look at this, this is just, it's almost like it's 2D. It has a slight amount of embossing on it, but it's generally just flat. And this is the beauty of this. It's absolutely stunning. You can see there in the light, like if you look over here, you can see all these panels, you can see the instrument panel has all the glazing already in there, all nice and shiny and it's flat, it's not like a, a drip of resin been put in there it's very very nice indeed, when you compare the instrument panel, I mean forget the fact that it's black if you look at this one you know you can see that the, the 3D instrument panel it is actually got you know 3D embossing on it it is absolutely beautiful. Um, again, you've got these panels down here with all the fuses in. You can see here, there's the equivalent between these panels here and these panels here. You can see the fact that the, the red fox parts... Come on, camera, focus. Why doesn't the camera want to focus? There we go. You can see the red fox panels have got this 3D raised fuse area, whatever they are. These are just flat with sort of an image on them, really. So, you know, really, really nice, beautiful, beautiful little kit. As I say, we'll get that close up just so you can look at it again. And you can see all the, all the switch gear all raised. See it there, it's absolutely stunning. And it's really gonna make your, you know, instrument panel pop. And if you wanna add, some um, you know a light coloured wash like a light grey wash just to pick up in between the panel lines make it look a bit dusty whatever it's going to look absolutely stunning 
Now I'm going to put this away so I don't lose anything. Obviously they're not very firmly bonded to the backing, otherwise you may break them when you take them off. So you need to be a bit careful not to lose them. Um, it's ever so funny that I'm doing this now because only today, months after I did my first Red Fox Studio review, a guy has commented and said, wow, man, I love these panels, they're absolutely awesome. Um, I wouldn't use them for aircraft, I don't build aircraft, but I'd buy them and use them in my sci-fi kits. And I thought, wow, yeah, they'd look fantastic, wouldn't they, sci-fi stuff? So, um, be interested to see what comes of that. But um, there we go, so that's going to go inside here. Okay, that goes on the back. And then that is all going to fit into that packet. I'm just looking here, was it a... No, well, I thought it may have been a glued together packet that I could have opened without unstapling it. So that's the CH47D. Now, as I say, I'd like to use that in mine, but if it's not accurate for a CH47A, then I guess I can't. I'll have to go and buy the CH47A set, which I'm sure they'll do. I haven't looked, but I'm sure they'll do one. So that's that one. OK, so I'm just going to put that back on there. Like so, and I'm going to restaple it so I don't start losing all the header cards and everything. I want it to all stay together neatly. There we go, so that can go back on there. So that's the CH47D. So that's the 35th scale. Let's have a look at this one, this Blackbird one. Let's have a look at the Stuka. So this is 24th scale, and you can see this is like a million times bigger. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a Stuka kit, so I can't show you this compared to the kit. I don't even have the 24th scale. Stuka PE because I don't actually have a 24 scale Stuka so I have no need for it but um, I can assure you this will be much better there's PE cannot com can, um, compete with this stuff especially in these larger scales so basically this is just the card showing you what's in there and then we got the instructions here and it's showing you again Sand all these parts, basically the same information. You can use CA and cyanacrylate and you can wash them and everything. And then simple instructions down here, just showing you where the panels go onto the plastic parts and everything and where you glue them on. If you're watching my Stuka build, you'll know that the, the actual um, cockpit of the Stuka is fairly simple and flat sided. So this is going to really make it pop, particularly in 24 scale. I think this is something you're definitely going to need. And this is for the trumpeter, but there's no doubt it could be used on the airfix as well. So um, this is the rear cockpit, um, and that's the front cockpit. So that's just basically going to fold out to those two. Yeah, so we've got the rear cockpit parts and the front cockpit parts there. And then here again in this bag, we've got the actual 3D printed parts. And once again, as we can see, they are amazing. And when you get this in the light, you won't believe your eyes. So we look at the instrument panel. I've got to try and catch this in the camera for you. If you look at that instrument panel, you can see we've got the, the glazing there. Okay, you've got flat glazing. Okay, it's not like a drop of varnish has been put there, so it's all convex or concave. It's actually flat, and you can see let me catch it in the light that all those bezels are actually raised just like they are on the real thing. So, you know, you have got a very, very accurate 24 scale instrument panel. You can hear, you can hear the, the raised texture of it as I slide my finger over it. And the same here with this panel here, you've got the, the knob in the middle there that's going to probably going to hold it all together. You've got these fuses on the side here or switches or whatever, and you can see that they're all raised you've got the radios there all the detail on them is it's all 3d it's all absolutely stunning so um yeah very very nice indeed very very nice so well worth having for your um for your stuka kit as i say whether it be trumpet or airfix i'm sure it'll fit both um, it's designed for trumpeter. I'm guessing, well, one of the kits, and they know in trumpeter it may have some issues in it. I think generally size-wise they're okay. But, um, but I'm sure it'll work absolutely fine in the uh, trumpeter and the um, and the Airfix kit. 
So that's that one. So let's have a look at this one. This is the SR71A and this is one I'm definitely going to be using because this is a kit that's on my build list very, very shortly. In fact, I think when the Stuka's done, I'll probably get this on the bench unless a certain Lancaster turns up. But, um, so this is our first one we're looking at in 148. So SR71A Blackbird for the Revell kit. So let's have a look at what we get in here. And we know that the instrument panels, because we looked at the review of the kit, we know the instrument panels in the kit are just fine. And we know you get decals for them, but they ain't going to be anything like as good as this. So what have we got here? This is the card basically showing us what we're getting. So we've got the um, pilot and the RSO. So here they're telling us what we need to remove. So we've got the, the side fa panel faces there being removed and the actual instrument panel faces there well. And the radar looked out, look out as well for the, um, for the RSO. And then it's giving you the part numbers that are going to be glued onto them. And then the RSO bit there in the back as well. So all very nice. And then here it's just giving a display of what the part numbers are. So front cockpit, rear cockpit. It's also nice to see we've got it powered down. It's not all lit up. Um, there's nothing worse I see than model aircraft with the cockpit all lit up and all the radar, all the radar equipment on and there's no one sat in the plane. I don't think that would happen. Um, so let's have a look at this. Was it the B1? I think the B1 gave you the option of having it all shut down or on. So as you can imagine, 48 scale is going to be a lot smaller. But you can see here that you have still got that beautiful detail on there. I'll get some photographs of this, I think. You've still got stunning detail and it's all in 3D. If I bring it over like this, you can see. You can see that it's all in 3D. If we focus on this instrument panel here. It's absolutely stunning. As I say, I'll get some photographs and put them up at the end with a bit of music. And um, you can see they're absolutely beautiful. I catch it, like you can see down there, you can see all those switches and stuff, knobs sticking out. Absolutely stunning. So there we go. So that's that, guys, for now. As I say, I've got all these other sets here. So if you, if, it, if you have a preference and you want to see one or two of these sets reviewed, as I say, put a comment in left below and I will uh, do them as and when we go. And um, as I say, I'll maybe give some of them away. Not quite sure what I want to keep in the stash yet. But uh, there we go. So I'll do some photographs. I'll say goodbye for now. I'll do some photographs, give you some music to listen to. But um, head on over to... Um, it was on here, wasn't it? www.rfstudio.hu, Hungary. Have a look um, at their beautiful, beautiful website and their amazing range. They do decals as well, I believe. Um, but go and have a look. Absolutely stunning. They are absolutely amazing and um, very reasonably priced, I believe, as well for, for what you're getting. You know, when you compare it to your to your photo etch. I know we've got a few other companies that are doing this now. But um, I think these guys are just amazing. Um, I wish they'd done a panel for the 48 scale Lancaster because that definitely needs some attention. Uh, and I think there, will, there may well be a panel coming for the 32nd scale Lancaster because I think the, the instrument panel in that kit is, leaves a bit to be desired. We shall see. But um, anyway, thanks for watching guys. I'll see you later. And as I say, stick around and I'll get some photos up now. Frank.